So let's add a little bit more detail about uh, the consequences of uh, restoring heat fluxes and uh, the issues involved in uh, uh, estimating the restoration timescales and spatial dependence of the restoration itself. Okay, so uh, here is an example: one uh, one D box model. Uh, sorry, one box model for the illustration of restoring fluxes. Let's say it has an average uh, temperature ocean. Uh, let's say box of the ocean uh, has a depth of delta Z and area A, an average temperature of T ocean, and exchanging. Uh, flux uh, of F uh, with the atmosphere. So the effect of restoring heat fluxes and the role of D star uh, that we, uh, you know, reduced it to an exchange coefficient in as uh, uh, similar to a sensible heat flux uh, based on the difference of the ocean and atmosphere heat uh, temperatures uh, can be illustrated here with this one box model. Energy balance in the one box model uh, uh, here. Uh, with surface area A and volume A times delta Z is given by the uh, heat uh, rate of change of heat, so rho times volume times heat capacity of the uh, water fluid times dt ocean dt equal to minus some coefficient A and the flux of the ocean uh, uh, at to atmosphere at temperature T O. Uh, which we wrote as minus a d star t o minus t o star, uh, where of course we are merging the uh, uh, various Taylor series expansion to produce that form. So t d of uh, d d d t of t o minus t o star, the perturbation let's say, equal to minus d star or rho c delta z times T O minus T O star, so T O itself can be written as uh, background temperature, let's say, of uh, T O star plus uh, T O at initial time minus T O star at some uh, future time times E to the minus T O tau. Okay, so you can take this here, and then whenever you have d dt with wow, d uh, a divided by a kind of formulation you end up with uh, exponential term when you integrate as you remember from your basic math um, so here t is the time stepping forward of the uh, heat balance and tau is a restoration time scale a relaxation time scale if you will so tau is here given by rho c delta z or d star which means it depends on how much fluid you have in your box because uh, obviously if you imagine a pot of water if it's a lot of water if you heat it and turn off the heat it will take longer to cool down as opposed to if it's just a cup of water if you leave a cup of hot tea out it will cool down very rapidly but if you had a pot of tea it will take much longer right so you want the relaxation times or restoring time scale to depend on delta z and d star which is the rate at which uh, energy is being picked up from uh, because of the temperature gradient uh, uh, that's driving the heat exchange so you can approximate this to be 1028 the density heat capacity uh, divided by uh, 45 uh, a value estimated for d star uh, in seconds per meter with delta z uh, so per unit depth uh, the relaxation time scale here ends up being one day per meter times delta z so how quickly uh, the temperature difference is driven back to ocean temperature or the background temperature then depends on uh, depth delta z okay so that scale dependence has to be taken into account and Willy Brandt uh, tried to do that but first in order to account for the scale dependence we would have to write the flux as dependent on x uh, the spatial variable uh, where you integrate some parameter lambda x uh, x prime times t x prime minus t star so we are just using dummy variable here uh, so that temperature difference uh, is going to depend on integrating over space with some coefficient but it's not at all easy to estimate these so Willy Brandt then uh, provided a, a parameterization for the spatial dependence of the uh, restoration. So a step towards scale dependence of uh, 
uh, oops, I missed here, lambda or d was proposed by Willy Brandt in 1993. So f uh, ocean to atmosphere at t ocean depends then on d1 times t o minus t o star minus d2 times del square grad square uh, t o minus t o star. So you have added a dependence here on space uh, so there you write this uh, as uh, d1 estimated to be 2 watts per kelvin per meter squared and d2 approximately 10 to the 13 watts per kelvin so small scale anomalies at a typical spatial scale of 500 kilometer given a surface ocean layer of 50 meters so uh, why do we do that because even though ocean is very deep the air sea exchanges are basically happening at some uh, upper level because the exchanges of the upper level of the uh, uh, ocean with the interior is very slow there are other processes that mix uh, and diffuse the heat down uh, and the molecular diffusion is always very small it's always the mixing that is very important so typically the surface mixed layer uh, is where the rapid time scale exchanges are happening so that is uh, usually uh, estimated to be about or used as a 50 meter layer that interacting with the atmosphere so small scale anomalies at a typical spatial scale of 500 kilometers uh, given a surface layer of 50 meter thickness are equilibrated on a time scale tau 2 of rho c delta z l squared or d2 of 60 days so if you have a 500 kilometer basin interior ocean let's say um, some estuary or something like this uh, you know the depth then it is equilibrating at around 60 days if a cold wave comes or a heat wave comes into the ocean uh, how long does it take for it to get back to its background state while large-scale anomalies decay on a time scale of tau 1 equal to rho c delta z or d1 of 3.5 years here you can think of el nino where you have moved large amounts of warm waters from the west pacific towards the eastern uh, pacific uh, even though the sloshing back happens within 9 to 12 months the entire uh, system uh, should take about 3.5 years which is kind of the uh, approximately the time scale between one El Nino and the other okay I'm just using it as a metaphor so formulation 810 may also be interpreted as a compact form of an atmospheric energy balance model so we have to worry about the uh, uh, same thing for the atmosphere as well because the atmosphere is being forced from the bottom by the energy it is receiving from the ocean so the radiation balance uh, and the heat exchange together create uh, land and ocean temperature and their variability and the atmosphere is of course responding to that so we have to worry about that as well so when we do this for the ocean uh, we can uh, uh, when we do this kind of simple Newtonian cooling type of approximation this is called Newtonian cooling or a restoration maybe this is better uh, seen as yeah uh, basically you are saying you are going to uh, remove the difference between the ocean temperature and the atmospheric temperature at some time scale and that satisfies your uh, requirements for let's say studying some uh, ocean process because you have represented the atmosphere in a simple way but here if you prescribe the atmospheric temperature you are end up ending up assuming that the atmosphere has uh, infinite uh, uh, heat uh, capacity because it is not changing in response to the ocean temperature change you are just damping things uh, back to ocean temperature so technically that's not a good assumption uh, you want the atmospheric temperature to be quite responsive to the ocean temperature changes because atmosphere is the one which has uh, limited heat capacity but it doesn't matter you can just make the humidity depend on sea surface temperature and capture most of the uh, effects or you will have to advect the humidity around to account for the scale dependence and so on and so forth so there are lots of details like that you can also fix uh, the uh, 
uh, heat flux into the ocean into the atmosphere so the uh, ocean is always losing uh, uh, gaining uh, the kind of heat fluxes we saw here so you can just prescribe this as the net heat flux in which case you are assuming that the atmosphere has uh, infinite heat capacity where it's instantaneously uh, radiating to space and always able to give this kind of heat flux uh, to the ocean. So long-term averages kind of mean that but there are details of processes which determine that equilibrium. So if you want to study the ocean and ocean processes at shorter time scales obviously that assumption is not very solid but depending on the processes you want to study again it is acceptable but you have always have to be very clear about the consequences of your assumption uh, that you are assuming uh, atmosphere has a high heat capacity or an infinite heat capacity and so on okay so those are the modeling issues when we are just worrying about the ocean so we'll continue now with uh, other aspects of uh, ocean atmosphere interactions and coupling okay